Hello, Western Oregon sports fans, and welcome to this edition of Bulls Weekly. Joining me again this week, baseball coach Jeremiah Robbins. Jeremiah, got the shorter bus ride out of the way this week, went up to Central Washington. Talk to me a little bit about that series and what you guys accomplished up there. Yeah, it was a good series. Um, you know, I, we've talked about it before. Playing on the road in the GNAC is is a tough thing to do, and you know, we went up there and took three out of four. We, you know, they came after us that first game, and you know, I tipped my hat to to their club and. They got it from us. Uh, I don't think we were focused like we should have been, uh, but it definitely waked us, woke us up for the rest of the series. And uh, I like how the kids responded in the next three games and to take the series three to one. Uh, from a from a club that is very competitive, that has had a rough year, um, but they they're a very good team. And obviously, Coach Story has a good club coming back for next year. He returns most of that club, so. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with next year and in the future. So I was proud of our efforts, good wins. And that's what I was pretty impressed about, too. The way you guys really bounce back, you know, you, good pitching beats good hitting every once in a while. And, you know, you run into those pitchers that are just hot that day or whatever it happens to be. But the one, you win game two, and then you guys have an offensive explosion in game three. But the one that I know is the real important one that you always talk about, game four, being the one that you can either split a series or you can win a series. And I know that... You have goals out there, and it's not to split a series up, even on the road. Absolutely. And, and, you know, what's nice for us as coaches is to know that Kirk Lynn's going game four. Um, he's been the, the anchor for us in that back end game, and the kid is just so competitive. Uh, he is a warrior that goes out there when he gets his opportunity and, and pitches his heart out. And to know you got him in that game four is, is very comforting for our team, our staff, and it, it allows our offense to get going. And I, I've just been so impressed with Kirk of how he's came in in that fourth game and with a, a good head on his shoulders, ready to compete. I'd like to talk to you a little bit too about, about the offense this weekend. I noticed this is kind of a, a good and a bad at the same time. Um, you guys maybe didn't have a lot of hits, but you guys were still scoring a runs, uh, quite a few runs. So I see it in two ways that way. You guys are grouping your hits together, taking advantage of opportunities, and getting on base in other types of ways, whether it's a hit by pitch, forcing you know, maybe a couple errors with your speed, or drawn walks. So uh, just talk to me a little bit about that, how you guys try to, you know, efficient offense, and when you guys have an opportunity, you guys try to take advantage of it, especially in this game four that we're talking about. You guys scored eight runs on 14 hits, but you, you still do it pretty efficiently. Yeah, you know, the thing that we've been working with our hitters is to, to have consistent at-bats and to be ready to get that pitch when it is presented. And I, I thought we did that very well this weekend, and especially on Sunday. Um, you know, we came out with, with good approaches, swung at our pitches, and they pitched, you know, they came right at us, and I, I think we got a few more fastballs this weekend than we have in the past, and we were on time for their fastballs, and uh, I liked uh, some of the pitches we checked off of that were their out pitches uh, that we didn't swing at, and I was very impressed with, you know, our mental makeup of our hitters uh, to answer the bell games three and four, and, you know, obviously game one, uh, or game three on on Sunday, you know, to take that pressure off of Grady. He's been in some grind games as of late, and to take a little bit of pressure off him and let him relax and get into a groove. Because, he, he, honestly, he didn't have his best stuff on, on Sunday. He was a bit off, and, you know, it was a, a different mound for him, I think. But, uh, you know, it, it, the way our hitters responded was very nice to see. And one of those hitters that we, I want to just hit on really quick, Daniel Dillard, up to 10 home runs this season. Second straight season. Last year he had... 16, bringing his total up to 26. Um, just to make mention of that one, the guy's been here for two years, second all-time in school home run now. He's, um, the school all-time leader is Casey Webster with 29, and he played here from 1982 to 1985. So just to put that in perspective of, um, the, the one he just passed was Andy Ortmeyer um, with 24. They were tied coming in the weekend. It wasn't worth mentioning until this point, but congratulations to Dan Dillard. Just, I, I know that it's a very much a team effort here at Western Oregon, but that's a great individual accomplishment and something that stands out in the record book. So that's for me. Congratulations there. And I, I, I want to jump back over to the team right now. Very exciting news came out last Wednesday. We, the, the Wolves moved up to number two in the West Region poll. Um, it's, nothing is said and done yet, but it's still very important to be ranked at this time because there's Two more polls, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And then those, the top four teams are going to be the ones that are going to be going to the regional. So sitting at number two is definitely better than sitting at number four right now or even outside of it. Talk to me a little bit about just kind of what's going on with the regional poll and what we can expect and some of the changes, not some of the changes, but what, what went on this last week? Well, 
You know, there's a lot of games to be played yet. Uh, each, I mean, we have eight games left. Uh, you know, the CCA has four, and then their conference tournament of four more games. So, w with the cluster of teams that we have in the West region, of everybody being really close, you know, to be in that two spot, that's it's nice. Um, but there's so much more baseball to be played. Um, I, you know, I, I basically say it's our midterms. We passed our midterms at this point, but it, it's the final, the final that we've got to pass. And you know, our, our next eight games will decide that, as well as the fate of the other teams in our region that are in that ranking. So, you know, we continue to talk about it, of focusing on on the now and, and not looking ahead to to the end. Um, you play good baseball for the, your next eight games. It's no secret you're going to be in a regional. Uh, I think what we put together this season at being 30 and 12 overall is, has been a very good effort from all of our guys, our coaches, and everybody involved with our program. But you know, like we said when we broke our, our team huddle yesterday, it's not over yet. We've got, we've got to get focused. We've got to come back and, and find a way to get this league title. And, and that's something that's always our number one goal is the, the, the league title. We're very proud of our efforts in our conference. Our, I believe our conference is much stronger than what it was last year. The numbers prove it. We've got two teams above 500 in St. Martin's and NNU and us all battling here. And it's going to come down to these last eight games. Uh, and then you look at the CCA, it's the same way. San Diego has jumped out to a little bit of a lead. Then after that, I, I believe you got six teams vying to be in that top four to get into their conference tournament. So. Yeah, the, the teams, the four teams that are focused and stay competitive, stay with each other as a team, are going to get to that regional. And it's going to be a good regional this year. So I, I like our chances. Uh, these kids have worked very hard, um, playing on the road as much as we do, and our bus trips and all that. It'd be a nice reward at the end to get there. Well, just to make a little note of that one, uh, UC San Diego is the number one team in the region right now, and they actually just swept a series. Um, from the number three team, Chico State, just, just to let everybody know kind of where the region is going and some fluctuations going on in there. But you talked about those bus trips and stuff. You Right now, actually, you've got to be looking forward to it. You get to close the season out at home. I want to start with the first series. I know you don't even want to look ahead to number two, but this weekend, a little bit different. You guys are playing on a Thursday, Friday against one of those teams that you mentioned that is another very quality team in the GNAC, NNU. NNU is very, very good, um, and they have been getting hotter and hotter as the, the back end of the season's going. Um, you know, they, they're going to come right at you with four very good arms, and, and you'll see at the end of the year probably in the all-conference stuff, they've got four arms that are as good as anybody in the league. Uh, they've got probably the best base dealer in the league and the Wendell kid. Um, they can hit. They can defend it. They've got good team speed. Um, yeah, it's... It's what we, we love. We love to play really, really good teams, and NNU is one of those teams. Um, you know, it's at, at our yard. Um, the Thursday-Friday setup, I really don't care for, but uh, we're going to accommodate their graduation. I believe they graduate on Saturday, so it was a no-brainer for us to change our series. Our pitching will be on a, a little bit short uh, a rest, but it is what it is. We need to come out and uh, focus on playing Wolves baseball against a very, very good team. And just to make a mention on that one, the Thursday game goes at 1. The Friday game is actually at 11, which is a little bit earlier than the Wolves usually start their baseball games. So just want everybody to be aware of that one and so we get out there and get some support for the Wolves. And then just to throw one more off there, um, don't want to go far too ahead, but the, the Wolves will close out their season at home, not their season, but the regular season schedule at home on May 13th and 14th against Montana State Billings. That is a Friday and Saturday schedule. So just want to make sure everybody's aware that you guys have a nice little four-game homestand to end out GNAC play. So cool. thanks, Jeremiah. I'm glad that you were able to make it in after all these road trips. And thank you all for watching this edition of Wolves Weekly.